in the previous lecture uh, we discussed about uh, the inelastic response spectrum and in that uh, we have seen that the inelastic response spectrum and the ductility they are very closely related. In fact, the uh, inelastic response spectrum is obtained for a particular value of the ductility. Uh, then also uh, we had seen that it is uh, not easy to find out a value of your um, uh, f bar y for a given value of the ductility factor mu or in other words f bar y is equal to f y by f 0 and uh, this is uh, is equal to inverse of the reduction factor. F 0 is the force or the resistance that is provided by a equivalent single degree of freedom system which is elastic and F y is the yield resistance provided by the elastoplastic system. Both the elastoplastic system and the equivalent elastic system they have the same stiffness up to the value of the yield strength F y and that is how we defined a bar y is equal to f y divided by f 0. Inverse of that is called the reduction factor r y. So, the reduction factor r y means that the corresponding elastic strength in the SDF system if it is divided by r y then we get the value of f y or the yield strength of the elastoplastic system. For example, r y is equal to 2 means the elastic strength of the equivalent single degree of freedom system is halved for an elastoplastic corresponding elastoplastic system. So, f bar y and the ductility they are closely related and the equation of motion uh, that you had written for the single degree of freedom system it was in terms of the variable uh, which is uh, the ductility factor that is in place of the displacement we wrote down the equation of motion in terms of the ductility factor. For a given value of a bar y, the ductility factor can be obtained uh, by solving that single degree of freedom equation. Therefore, it is easier to find out the value of mu for a given value of a bar y. The reverse is of course, not true that is is very difficult to find out the value of f bar y in other words f y that is the yield strength for a elastoplastic system for a given value of mu. So, what is done is uh, that we solve the equation uh, in which the ductility factor is the variable and obtain the values of mu for different values of f bar y which are assumed and for a particular value of T n and the damping coefficient j. In that fashion one can obtain a set of values of mu corresponding to the values of f bar y for a uh, given T n and j from that one can uh, interpolate the required value of mu and the corresponding value of f bar y. Once we get that then that particular value of f bar y n is again put 
into the equation of motion and we solve. Now, after solving we get a value of mu and if that particular value of mu is equal to the value of the mu that was interpolated from the set of values of f bar y and mu then we say that there is a convergence otherwise we continue an iterative process to in order to obtain a value a pair of values of mu and f bar y which are compatible for a given value of t n and xi. And that is how one can obtain the value of the f bar y for a given value of mu. Now, once we get that then from f bar y one can find out the value of f y because f bar y is equal to f y divided by f 0 where f 0 is the uh, strength corresponding to the uh, elastic purely elastic system or in other words for the same earthquake we find out an elastic response and from that elastic response one can get the value of f 0. And once you get the value of uh, f 0 uh, then uh, by dividing uh, the uh, uh, f y divided by m 0 uh, we uh, get a value of f bar y or in other words f y can be written as f 0 multiplied by the value of uh, f 0. In that fashion one can get the yield strength of the elastoplastic system and uh, we know that the yield strength of the elastoplastic system is equal to mass times the inelastic uh, response spectrum acceleration. So, one knows the value of A that is the uh, uh, elastic uh, inelastic resp acceleration response spectrum ordinate corresponding to a particular value of mu for a given set of T n and xi. Uh, then by changing the combinations of T and xi one can get different values of the uh, acceleration that is the inelastic response acceleration for uh, a given value of mu and that can be plotted in order to get the inelastic acceleration response spectrum. Now, once we get the inelastic response spectrum then from there one can get the inelastic velocity spectrum and also the inelastic displacement spectrum. So, uh, the, uh, uh, the spectrums inelastic spectrums uh, that are obtained for a particular value of mu uh, they can be plotted uh, in a tripartite plot also they can be plotted uh, in a, as an individual plot they can be plotted in the tripartite plot because of the relationship that holds good between the inelastic uh, response spectrum of displacement, velocity and acceleration. Uh, and uh, the, uh, these relationship uh, is the same as the relationship that you have observed in the case of the elastic response spectrum that is um, v y inelastic response spectrum of pseudo velocity is equal to omega times d that is omega times the inelastic displacement spectrum response. Uh, similarly, the uh, inelastic response acceleration is equal to omega times the inelastic response spectrum of pseudo velocity. So, because uh, this relationship holds good 
one can plot the inelastic response spectrum also in a tripartite plot uh, that uh, was done for the case of the inelastic response spectrum. So, the uh, a plot of uh, the uh, inelastic acceleration spectrum uh, versus T n for different values of mu is shown in this figure. Uh, in this figure this uh, m basically uh, is uh, wrongly written in place of m it should be mu for it is mu is equal to 1, 1 1.5248 and so on. For that uh, we have plotted a y by g that is the inelastic acceleration response spectrum ordinate is normalized with respect to the uh, g value and that happens to be is equal to f y by the weight w and where f y is the yield strength of the single degree of freedom system. So, for a given value of mu and a time period t and for a specified value of damping one can read from this ordinate the value of a y by g and or the value of f y and uh, uh, this f y can be obtained as uh, simply by multiplying m with a y and uh, one can get the value of the yield strength corresponding to a particular value of mu. So, this is very important because if we wish to design a system or a single degree freedom system uh, for a particular value of mu or uh, say for example, mu is equal to 2 uh, then what should be the value of the yield strength. So, that value of the yield strength can be straight away obtained by multiplying the mass of the single degree system by a y uh, that is the inelastic response spectrum of acceleration from this curve. For the case of multi degree freedom system we will see how we can extend this and uh, use these inelastic uh, acceleration response spectrum for the design for an expected value of the ductility factor of 2. So, the use of inelastic response spectrum is the, uh, the design of a particular structure for an expected value of, of the ductility factor of 2. So, this kind of the design spectrum is given in some codes where the response spectrums are provided for different values of the ductility factor. Meaning that if those inelastic response spectrum are used for the designing the structure, then the structure is expected to have on an average or in an overall sense a ductility of 2 or 4 or 8 or 1.5 as the case may be. So, that is the use of uh, inelastic response spectrum. Uh, apart from that the inelastic response spectrum can also be used for finding out the performance point for performance based design in which uh, a pushover curve uh, that is the curve of spectral acceleration versus the displacement uh, that is uh, plotted for a pushover analysis and the intersection point of the inelastic response spectrum for a given ductility that gives the performance point. And this performance point shows that uh, whatever base shear that we get from that performance point for that base shear uh, or the yield base shear uh, if we design the structure by distributing the base shear uh, as a 
load for all the floors, then uh, that particular uh, structure uh, is expected to give in an overall sense a ductility of mu is equal to the value for which uh, the response spectrum uh, was used. And now, the another important aspect that is uh, derived out of this solution uh, is the plot of f bar y versus the time period T n. We have seen that through an iteration procedure one can find out a compatible set of uh, a value of f bar y and mu uh, for a given time period and a damping uh, value. Therefore, uh, it is possible to plot a curve showing the relationship between f bar y and T n for a given value of mu. So, uh, such curve is uh, shown over here, uh, it is not m, these are all mu. So, uh, they are plotted for mu is equal to 1, mu is equal to 1.5, 2 and so on. And uh, uh, the uh, values of f bar y are uh, plotted uh, on this axis. And for a particular earthquake, one can have a value of f bar y versus t uh, depicted in the form of the curve uh, uh, would uh, look like this. Now, this exercise was done for not only one earthquake, for several earthquakes, and then uh, these curves were uh, averaged out in order to find out a tentative shape of the curve showing the relationship between f bar y and a time period T n for a given value of ductility. The use of uh, this kind of curve is that for a particular value of the ductility, if we have such an idealized curve, uh, then uh, using that curve one can find out what is the value of f bar y corresponding to a particular value of T n. And once we get that, uh, then from f bar y one can calculate f y or we know the yield strength uh, for the equivalent single degree of freedom system. Now, that effort of finding out uh, the curve for different earthquakes and idealizing them as a smooth curve led to a certain formulation of a bar y or the uh, an equation for a bar y as a function of the ductility factor and which are valid for different time periods. Now, here the T A, T B, uh, T C, T D, T E, T F, they are the values of the time periods that we had considered in the case of uh, the elastic response spectrum plotted in tripartite plot. The whole idea uh, is uh, to construct similar uh, kind of plot or tripartite plot for inelastic response spectrum by uh, looking at uh, the variation of f bar idealized f bar y with T n for specified values of mu. Now, uh, once we look at uh, these particular curve, uh, we can see that for a value of T a is equal to 1 by 33 that is uh, for very small value of T a the value of f bar y is almost equal to 1 that is uh, the T n being less than T a the values are almost equal to 1 or in other words one can say uh, that 
the system as if it is behaving like a elastoplastic a uh, elastic system from T A or uh, from T B to this will not be T C this will be T C dashed the T C dashed is shown over here in this curve. Now, uh, for different mu's we can see that the T C dashed is varying and between T B and T C dashed the variation of f bar y with T n can be represented by this that is 2 mu minus 1 to the power minus half or in other words 1 by square root of root over 2 mu minus 1. So, one can plot these lines from the T c dashed between T c dashed and T b and uh, wherever it cuts the T b axis this point and this point they are straight away joined by a straight line that is how we can get the curve idealized curve for this segment as well as for the segment up to uh, these points up to T c dashed. Then uh, for T n greater than T c that is that this is the T c for that the value of f bar y is given by mu to the power minus 1 or 1, 1 by mu and that is plotted over here for different values of mu and uh, uh, this is extended and see the point where it cuts the T c axis. And those point and the point which uh, we obtained uh, here at T c dashed they are joined by a straight line and thus we get this segment of the curve. So, therefore, the full segment of the curve can be traced and uh, this uh, shows uh, the idealized values of f bar y for different values of T n for a given value of uh, the damping and the ductility ratio mu. So, utilizing these relationship that is obtained from a, an exercise of, of finding out f bar y versus T n for a number of earthquake and averaging them and from there trying to find out a relationship between f bar y and T n some important output is obtained which are used in plotting the inelastic response uh, spectrum curve from the elastic response spectrum curve. So, uh, the idea now is to, to construct an inelastic response spectrum from the elastic response spectrum uh, or idealized elastic response spectrum uh, that we have uh, obtained uh, previously and uh, we had plotted on a tripartite plot. So, if you recall that how elastic response spectrum is plotted uh, on a tripartite plot, then we will see that we require the values of the ground maximum ground displacement, maximum ground acceleration and maximum ground velocity. So, uh, they are uh, first plotted in a uh, tripartite plot and that forms the baseline, baseline that is a, a line like this straight line like this will go, then there will be a straight line will be giving going like this and there will be horizontal straight line like that. Now, once we have uh, those uh, peak ground on values or the peak ground acceleration, peak ground displacement and peak ground velocity values and uh, they are uh, from that the baseline is obtained. Then by multiplying those uh, lines or the ordinates from that line by a factors alpha a, alpha b and alpha d, uh, we obtain the inelast uh, elastic design response spectrum curve. 
uh, and alpha A, alpha V and alpha D values are available for different uh, conditions that is for uh, the extreme earthquake and for the design earthquake and given in, uh, in different literature. Now, once we have that elastic design uh, spectrum, then the whole idea is to obtain the inelastic response spectrum from this elastic response spectrum. So, that is uh, what we intend to do. The construction follows the following uh, steps. That is uh, first what we do is that divide constant acceleration ordinates of uh, the elastic response spectrum for the segment B to C by a reduction factor R y is equal to square root of 2 mu minus 1 to obtain the value of B dash and C dash. That is uh, here uh, you can see that B C over here the, in the acceleration zone the B C uh, that is divided by these ordinates are divided by square root of 2 mu minus 1 to get uh, the this line and this line obviously will be parallel to this line. Now, this is done because we have seen that the f bar y, f bar y between T b and T c that is uh, given by square root 1 by square root of 2 mu minus 1 or in other words the elastic strength is reduced by a factor of R y is equal to square root of 2 mu minus 1. Uh, the relationship between R y and f bar y if you recall is equal to R y is equal to 1 by f bar y. So, thus the value of the elastic acceleration is reduced by a factor of square root of 2 mu minus 1 and that is how this ordinate is equal to a divided by square root of 2 mu minus 1. Similarly, if we uh, look at the value of uh, the f bar y for a time period of T n greater than T c, uh, then it is uh, uh, the factor is 1 by mu uh, thus the reduction factor will be mu uh, that is uh, the values of the elastic strength or elastic spectrum must be divided by mu. So, that is uh, what is done over here uh, in this uh, spectrum the velocity ordinates over here and the displacement ordinates on this side or in the displacement zone and the velocity zone ordinates. Uh, they are divided by simply mu and this also is uh, divided by simply mu. So, we get uh, the point over here on this uh, time period line and on this time period line and on this time period line. And once we get that, uh, then here at uh, the end where uh, the displacement spectral displacement is equal to peak ground displacement itself. Uh, so, there uh, also we divide the displacement by mu that is how we get a point over here on this particular time period line. Then by joining these two lines we get the elastic inelastic response scar curve uh, line between E dash and F dash. Here we assume that the value of the acceleration for a very small 
value of time period. They are the same that is A and A dash are the same. This follows from this relationship that is uh, Tn less than Ta for that f bar y is equal to 1. That is why A and A dash are the same. And after uh, or below A dash the inelastic response spectrum curve and the elastic response spectrum curve uh, they are the same. So, in this way one can get the value of the inelastic design response spectrum for a specified value of mu uh, constructed from the elastic response spectrum. So, therefore, uh, if we wish to plot an elastic uh, response spectrum and an inelastic response spectrum for a given value of mu, then the quantities that are required is the peak ground displacement, peak ground velocity and peak ground acceleration. One of those quantities should be specified and if one of those quantities are specified, then the other quantities, other two quantities can be obtained from an empirical relationship that we have seen before. So, once we get the peak ground displacement velocity and accelerations, then we obtain a baseline curve. From that baseline curve, one can construct the elastic design spectrum by multiplying the curves with uh, the values of alpha a, alpha b and alpha d. Uh, these values uh, are obtained, uh, are available in a different, a different literature. So, using uh, those values, then one can obtain the elastic response spectrum curve in a tripartite plot. And once we get that elastic response spectrum, then from there one can construct the inelastic response spectrum by dividing the elastic response spectrum ordinates by root over 2 mu minus 1 on the left hand side and in the velocity prone and displacement prone, prone regions uh, the ordinates are divided by the uh, mu value that is the ductility factor values and that is how one can construct a inelastic response spectrum for a given value of mu and and the damping ratio. One example problem is uh, solved over here the for a for a single degree of freedom system uh, an inelastic spectrum is obtained for mu is equal to 2 from the elastic design response spectrum and uh, the elastic design response spectrum this was obtained in an example before and from that elastic design response spectrum uh, by dividing the ordinates by appropriate functions of mu, uh, we obtain the acceleration, inelastic acceleration on part, then uh, inelastic velocity sensitive region and then inelastic displacement sensitive regions using uh, the factors that I had discussed before. So, that is how uh, one can get inelastic design response spectrum for mu is equal to 2, then mu is equal to 3, mu is equal to 4 and so on. Mu is equal to 1 obviously will correspond to uh, the uh, value of the elastic design response spectrum. Next the question comes that for the single degree of freedom system all these things are valid in the sense that if we obtain a value of the Fy or the uh, inelastic acceleration, uh, then one can find out the value of the corresponding yield base shear corresponding to a value of a mu for a given value of mu. Now, if we analyze the single degree of freedom system, 
uh, for that yield strength that is obtained from the response spectrum curve. The yield strength is obtained by multiplying m with the spectral acceleration value a in elastic uh, acceleration spectrum value. Then one get the value of the yield strength and with that yield strength we if you carry out a non-linear analysis of the system then we will get the same value of the ductility for which we had obtained the inelastic acceleration spectral ordinate and also the value of the yield strength. So, this is uh, uh, true for a single degree of freedom system. However, once uh, we are trying to use the same concept uh, for the multi-story building, it is not possible to get a yield strength straight away uh, for this structure for a specified value of mu uh, because of the following reasons. Uh, it is difficult to obtain design yield strength of all members for a uniform value of mu. So, that simply thus for the single degree of freedom system we have got only one spring or in other words one member and therefore, the mu value and the corresponding the yield strength can be uh, easily determined from the inelastic response spectrum curve. Since the number of members in a multi degree of freedom system are more than one, therefore, it is uh, difficult to find out the design yield strength for all members for a given value of mu. Uh, next, uh, the ductility demands imposed by earthquake on members uh, widely differ. Uh, so, that is um, also another fact because as the entire structure goes into the inelastic range, then different joints and uh, different members undergo different inelastic deformations. As a result of that, the ductility for the individual members are different. Thus, there is no uniform ductility that can be talked about for the multi degree freedom system or a multi story building. Now, some studies on multi story frames are summarized here to show how ductility demands vary from member to member when designed using elastic spectrum for uniform mu this will not be elastic spectrum, uh, it will be inelastic spectrum. So, using uh, an inelastic uh, response spectrum for a given value of mu, if you are wanting to analyze or find out the yield strength and analyze the building, uh, then uh, how the results are obtained or how the uh, results vary from that of the single degree of freedom analysis. Uh, so, that is depicted. Building frames of uh, sizes uh, 4 st 5 story, 10 story, uh, 20 story and 30 stories were taken as uh, case studies. Uh, in that, uh, the frames are deliberately uh, kept as a shear frame. So, that the columns are only yielding. The uh, time periods corresponding to the four frames are for the five story frame the time period is 0.8 second. For the 10 story frame it is uh, 1.6 second. For the 20 story frame it is 3 second and uh, for the 40 story frame it is 5 second. 40 story frame uh, is an example for a flexible building, whereas the 5 story frame is uh, an example of a rigid frame. Now, the uh, masses uh, for the uh, frames are kept as uniform all through having a mass m uh, at each floor. Now, the uh, yield base shear uh, for the frames 
are calculated using the inelastic response spectrum of the El Centro earthquake corresponding to a specified ductility factor. So, once uh, the yield base shear for each one of the frames is calculated, then the base shears are distributed uh, to the story shear and uh, this distribution is made as per the code provisions. Uh, this uh, gave us the uh, yield shear for each of the stories of the frame. Now, in order to perform the inelastic analysis, uh, we need a backbone curve that is a curve showing the variation of the uh, shear force uh, with the uh, uh, story displacement uh, and uh, uh, showing the point of yielding uh, that is an elastoplastic uh, backbone curve. Now, in order to provide that input, uh, not only we require uh, the yield shear for the columns, but, uh, but also we require the stiffnesses for each of the stories. In order to obtain the stiffnesses, uh, again uh, we uh, use the base shear approach uh, for distributing the total base shear coming uh, at the uh, base of the frame uh, which is calculated according to the specified time periods and the damping. The base shear is then distributed along the height uh, to find out the uh, story uh, shear as well as the lateral force that is acting at each floor level. Second uh, thing that is used is that uh, in order to uh, make a convenience in the calculation, uh, we assume that the drift for each story is uniform, which leads to a linearly varying displacement along the height of the building. Thus, the displacement described at the top of the building uh, is uh, enough to define the displacement at other flow levels. With these uh, uh, two assumptions, uh, we write down the stiffness matrix for the entire frame in terms of the unknown stiffness coefficients for each floor and uh, solve the equation k delta is equal to p, where the p is the lateral loads that has been already calculated. Uh, which are in terms of m at each floor level. Uh, the matrix equation uh, gives uh, n equations with n unknown coefficients uh, or stiffness coefficients. So, these unknown stiffness coefficients can be then uh, obtained uh, in terms of the uh, story mass m and the of deflection of the frames that is delta. Now, once we uh, get the uh, stiffnesses or stiffness coefficient of each flow level in terms of uh, m uh, by delta, then we use uh, the stiffness matrix and the mass matrix which is a diagonal mass matrix. So, uh, using these two matrices we find out the fundamental frequencies and the fundamental time period uh, of the frames uh, using the eigenvalue problem. Uh, once we get the fundamental time period for each one of the frames, then we equate this fundamental time period with the specified time period that has been assumed. And uh, uh, this gives us a value of delta again uh, in terms of mass. Uh, thus, uh, the entire stiffness coefficients of each floor can be now expressed as a function of 
mass mole or uh, the mass of each floor. The yield story shears are also uh, obtained in terms of mass because uh, the total story, story shear will be in terms of mass. So, thus uh, now we can provide the backbone curve necessary uh, for obtaining the inelastic analysis. Uh, with these uh, 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 backbone curves, uh, each one of the frames are now analyzed for L centro earthquake. The uh, frames uh, are now uh, designed for a uh, pro, uh, for a specified value of uh, the ductility factor uh, for which the yield based shear is obtained for each one of the frame. Uh, so, thus uh, the each one of the frame that is analyzed under L centro earthquake uh, is having a specified uh, ductility factor. So, from the uh, um, analysis uh, we find out the ductility demand at each flow level and these ductility demands uh, obtained for each one of the frame um, uh, are then compared with the uh, ductility, uh, ductility for which the frames are designed. The results uh, of uh, the study uh, uh, show some interesting result. Uh, for example, for taller frames uh, the ductility uh, computed or ductility demand that is obtained from the analysis are larger in upper and lower stories and uh, uh, the it decreases in the middle story. Secondly, the deviation of the story ductility demands from the design one increases for taller frames. In general, the ductility demand is maximum at the first story and could be about 2 to 3 times the design uh, ductility uh, for the frames. Thus, uh, uh, the uh, some increase of the base shear uh, by certain percentage tends to keep uh, the ductility demand within a stipulated uh, limit. Uh, therefore, uh, if the base shear uh, which is obtained uh, by the response spectrum method of analysis and uh, the uh, base shear coefficient method, uh, then the greater of the two base shears uh, is better to consider in the design uh, and thus uh, uh, this can help in improving uh, or thus uh, it can help in uh, meeting the greater ductility demand that is obtained at the first floor level. Uh, let me now summarize what we uh, discussed uh, in this lecture. Uh, first, we uh, described two system. One is a elastoplastic nonlinear single degree freedom system and a corresponding uh, elastic uh, single degree freedom system. Uh, from that, uh, we defined uh, the non-dimensional non or normalized uh, yield uh, shear uh, for the single degree of freedom system that is f bar y and a reduction factor r. Uh, we also defined uh, the ductility factor. Uh, with these three uh, 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 factors uh, defined, uh, we are able to uh, write down the single degree of freedom equation and, uh, with the uh, elastoplastic nonlinearity in terms of the ductility as a variable and can solve uh, the equation uh, uh, to find out the value of ductility for a specified value of f bar y. Now, uh, once we uh, do that, uh, then utilizing those results, uh, one can construct what is known as the inelastic response spectrum for a specified ductility. 
Now, the inelastic response spectrum is similar to that of the elastic spectrum. The only difference is that the displacement spectrum is denoted by the yield displacement dy and then we accordingly uh, define v y that is the pseudo uh, uh, inelastic velocity or pseudo yield velocity and then pseudo yield acceleration uh, uh, which is equal to omega n square d y. In order to obtain these uh, 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 spectrums, it is necessary that uh, uh, we are able to calculate a bar y for a specified value of mu which is not possible to obtain straight away from the solution of the single degree of freedom equation. So, an iterative procedure uh, is conducted in order to obtain uh, the value of f bar y for a, a specified value of mu. And once we get that, uh, then one can plot the f bar y or the uh, acceleration, yield acceleration versus time period for a given value of ductility. Also, one can examine uh, the variation of f bar y and time period uh, in the log log plot, so that one can derive uh, some idealized equation uh, which expresses f bar y in terms of the ductility factors. And once uh, it is known, uh, then we have shown that it is possible to draw an inelastic idealized inelastic design spectrum from the elastic design spectrum. Uh, so, uh, uh, in this uh, and finally, uh, we have also discussed uh, the inelastic behavior of the multi-story frame in terms of the ductility demand.